Welcome everyone to this conversation uh, recorded ahead of time with Nida and Maria ahead of our upcoming online course with Advaya titled Remembering Our Rooted Selves, which is starting in 2024. Um, once this recording goes live, it will still be 2023. So in case anyone's watching from the 2024 future, hello. Um, we are recording this from the past. Um, and we'll get into a lot of themes of time and um, past and present and future today. So exciting to be on theme for that. Um, the course is a six week course um, and it is subtitled Unearthing Ancestral Ways of Being to Shift Collective Futures, which gives you a good sense of what it's going to be about. But in this conversation, we're going to just kind of dive into some of the ideas um, and content that we will be covering through the course. Um, it is a multi-teacher course, so Naida and Maria are the co-curators of it, but we will have many other voices. Um, just to say, you can also find that information on our website, where um, all of the bios and the session descriptions can also be found. Um, yeah, and so today's um, today's conversation is grounded um, as we, uh, the three of us, um, have discussed, um, grounded in the idea of cultivating responsibility. So that's response dash ability. Um, and so focusing on this, um, partly because uh, this conversation is a response to our current moment that we are living through together, but also not just this moment, um, like a collective longer look at what has happened and what is happening, what we are looking at and what we also are not looking at. Um, so wanting to be um, aware of that as well, that while this is a conversation that is timely, it is also very timeless in that sense. Um, yeah, so, um, but I think before I go into all of these questions and we start dialoguing a little bit, um, Naida and Maria, I would love for you both to introduce yourselves um, and maybe a little bit about uh, your intentions and hopes for the course and the participants who will be coming on board. Yeah. Uh, maybe Naida, you want to start? Since you're unmuted. <laughs> sure, I um, I can. Um, so uh, yes, Naida Kulshaw. Um, my, my interest in doing this um, stems from my curiosity and my research. So the research was um, I'm a doctorate of business administration student um, candidate. And one of the things that have come up in my research itself was what does it mean to resource yourself by returning to the past and revaluing or reseeing or shedding light back on? Um, much of the learning knowledge and ability that people had to live in harmony on the planet for millennia. How is it that we many on the planet have forgotten some of these connections through many uh, processes, um, both forced um, and um, spread around the world. And so because I started to do this research, I also asked myself, what would it be like to remember some of these um, elements of these journeys, the journeys of our elders of the past, journeys of communities that still exist and who, are, um, who have fought to try to keep those connections over time? And so what would it be like to talk about those but more not in a historical sense, but in a sense of um, how those could resource our journeys moving forward. And so this is a little bit of, of my intention, but also the inspiration um, for why I was very excited to collaborate, co-curate uh, with Maria on this project. Um, and yes, I'm Maria Clara. I'm, I'm speaking from Brazil, from Rio de Janeiro. And um, 
I have been working with uh, stories in very different ways. Um, I started uh, working as an actress and then journalist and then filmmaking. And then somehow um, the, after going to Schumacher College with a friend, I started a project that was about how the ways um, we tell stories create the world that we live in and the stories um, and the, the name was this is not the truth so the idea was to question the the truth that we we are so deeply in, immersed in and uh, after that i started uh, researching this in my master that was uh, very connected to donna harry's uh, story future um, the the future fabulation that she um she has in the last part of her book, Staying with the Trouble. And um, so the, the, in a sense, like my, my research was connecting that to um, some, what it is speculative fabulation uh, made by women in Brazil in the last decade, especially in films. And with that, I met uh, Sofia and Patri that are one of the teachers of the course that uh, they they have a film they, they created a film together that is um it's kind of it's a symbol that um about what what could be speculative fabulation because it's like two um brazilian women but one is a indigenous uh, uh guaranibia women uh so she has another identity in that sense and patri is an anthropologist and in their encounter that is not a common one they discover what what it could be what it could be a meeting like that and what it the difference and the the also the similarities of being a woman in that sense so it's it's kind of uh, it's not a fix of the problems of the colonization and everything that this meeting carries, but it's a possibility of creating something else with this um, different encounter, what Harvey would call um, some kind of ma making kin, making kin in, in a strange ways. Like, and this is something that I feel that is very um, important to these times. And this course is a way of making kin with strangers somehow uh, that we probably would never meet, but we can meet and, and be able to create stories together in a way. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I love, um, love the idea of meeting strangers. I think a lot of the um, a lot of the Advaya courses are a meeting of strangers in that way. Um, and I think the, the really the good thing that's come out of um, I guess like online courses in this format, as much as there is a lot to be desired also within this format, um, the possibility of of meeting kin across the world is something that is very precious and special. Um, and a, a way of coming together that um, that has emerged from like modernity, right? As like um, problematic as it can be, uh -huh. um, but we are in this moment um, and in this moment together. And for that, I'm also very grateful. Um, so, so uh, there's that. <laughs> um, uh, thank you both for your introductions. Um, I'm gonna spring some questions. Um, I have prepared the questions, um, but they're also kind of like loose um, <laughs> collections of thoughts in response um, to the materials that you both have shared. Um, so to those who are watching, um, this conversation will be grounded in, like I said, the, the idea and the theme of cultivating responsibility, which um, comes directly from Donna Haraway's work, but also um, is situated within many other authors, thinkers, feminists, um, artists. Uh, and so we will be referencing specifically that chapter um, alongside other quotations here and there, um, which will all be listed um, below. So 
um, do read more into it if you are keen. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to open up um, with expressing a few thoughts about cultivating responsibility and why at this moment is especially at. Um, so I think one, uh, we're kind of watching the emergence of um, injustice with a kind of, I guess, greater intensity um, than many of us watching have ever experienced or have ever witnessed. Um, and it's demanding a lot of resilience from everyone who is watching and uh, demanding a lot of kind of staying with the trouble, staying with the grief um, and the frustration. Um, and also this moment is a lot of tuning in and paying attention um, and that, you know, being one of the greatest actions we can take at the moment. Um, and finally also, um, this is really at because um, in, within the framework of cultivating responsibility, there's this idea that is a two-way listening, um, which doesn't dehumanize the person that you are quote unquote paying attention to. Um, lots of like things to get into. Um, but before we kind of get into the intricacies of that, um, I would love for um, either of you or both of you um, to situate us by speaking to what cultivating responsibility means. So I read a little bit, but you both have studied it much more than I have. So I would love for you to kind of bring some opening thoughts. Um, you don't have to directly respond to what I said. Um, you can add more things into the into the compost heap and we can see what emerges. Yeah. Uh, for me, in what, um, what I get from the thing of responsibility, two things are very important. One is um, the idea that um, making, it's not to everyone, it's not being linked to everyone and, you know, uh, I'm, it, it's been linked in some special ways to this being and to that other one. So this, um, when, you, when you create these connections, you, you, you also know um, where to care, uh, because I feel that in these moments, where there's so much collapse everywhere, we, we should have, um, it's not that we will have, oh, I care more for this, but if you have some uh, linings that, and relations that guide you and makes you connected to some issues, you know, and you can, um, also feel the pain but also the joy in that in that uh, in that fight but fight's not a good word but you know uh you can also have other coalitions but you know you have some friends and uh, people that are with you in some of this trouble and staying with you together because i i feel that there is a sense that responsibility would be like responding to it all but this is not possible because we are uh, humans when we live somewhere and we have connections to some other beings humans and not humans so i feel that and that's why i, I come back to the film that i just mentioned because in that creation of relationship there uh, they understand paradoxes of of uh, being women and and also um prejudice that's that was before that you don't know people and then you can create something else now they are they sophia um although she's not uh indigenous woman herself by blood or something or perhaps everyone she could be but not you know not her mom and dad but uh she she created a um, together with them, a collective of women that um, work with film, indigenous women. Uh, that is a, a network connecting all of these women all over Brazil. So I feel that this is an, an example of creating responsibility and, and going together um, 
in and continuing the work and these are it's it it, uh, it grows you know it's it's kind of a garden and, and you are also uh, together in the struggle but also um in the celebrations possible um in this time so and and also another thing that this was to to create something to create these lines and to strength strengthen this line sorry for my english but you know to make make them bigger you know and uh, the other thing is um it's not specifically to responsibility but in this idea of making something of feeling that everything is very heavy and like we're descending now you know there's a quote it's not specifically that but from um, Ayuton Krenak indigenous leader from Brazil that he says like the words been ending for us since you know since Portuguese came here so you know now you you start noticing what I've been telling so when we reframe this idea of the word is ending like it's ending to who where you know it's been ending to so many people for so long so i feel when when we have when we have this in mind we we can shape shift this idea that it's you know i don't know yeah i think it's from responsibility these two things come to me when i speak to that what do you think naida well i can add a little bit on the responsibility and also link it to something that I've been reflecting on deeply. Um, I have the sense of the word that as it's divided into the two pieces in response to. And so I found that also very helpful because it's an action. It's being proactive and it's seeing what can you cultivate within your sphere of influence and not specifically thinking I have to have the solution for everything, which is a little bit collected, connected to this idea of responsibility and uh, to take on the responsibility. And here it's response to um, very similar to the example that you gave um, about creating the film collective. When I think of um, that overwhelm feeling, I also connect it to um, the idea of well, the idea of considering that you're here in a moment of time and that our moment in time is connected to those who've come before us and that are gonna come after us. And we're here in this moment in time to do what we can in this moment in time. And when you don't think that you're supposed to have the solution before you pass away, then it offers you a little bit of grace and opportunity to focus on what can you cultivate while you're here. Because if you can cultivate something that you are passionate about, that you care about, and through those ripples can touch other people, then that is this legacy that you might leave behind in the sense of seeding ideas, seeding caring, seeding dot, 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 and to fill in the dot, uh, depending on what it is that you're working on and that you're passionate about. And the other component that I would just add in here is um, the idea of restoration, which I get into the narrative. Um, and that comes from um, Robin Kimler's book, uh, Braiding Sweetgrass. Um, and in that book, she mentions restoration and this idea of um, whose story are we speaking of and whose story do we continue to repeat and do we share other stories, this narrative, this importance of um, shifting the narrative. It doesn't mean forgetting the narrative because that's also something that is not possible, but it is also thinking about, well, which narrative do we want to continue saying and repeating and which ones have not been spoken about, which might again help us as we journey forward. So these are two, um, my response, but also a component on the narrative that I would like to add. Yeah, so I think there is much to do responsibility with relation, right? 
So it's the, another way to think about the, the way to create relationships. Ooh, lots already. I feel like, um, uh, I, metaphorically, I feel like the, the heat of the compost heap is really um, increasing uh, in, in a really exciting and also generative way. Um, but so to kind of hold on to, um, there are a few threads, but I think I want to um, continue on with the thread of shape shifting and also, I mean, to what Maria said and to what Nida said about whose stories are we speaking of. Um, I think there is a connecting thread there about when we are present to multiple different narratives and multiple kinships, um, we're able to see and hold um, different perspectives and different stories at the same time. Um, and also recognize our own reality and our own perceptions alongside other people's realities. So to, to make that more concrete, I think the, so the idea of kind of, Maria, you were mentioning um, the world is ending, but to who? That kind of sitting with other people's narratives um, or s s realities that are not necessarily your own, doesn't deny your own um, uh, position or your own um, reality, but it allows you to see other things at the same time. And I think that's that's really key to responsibility, um, a very specific type of uh, listening that isn't um, that isn't just a person to a person, but holding your own reality while holding and making space for someone else's. Um, and then that relates to the the idea of of the question of neither the, whose stories are we um, speaking of, you know, and the idea that you're not forgetting by making space for other stories. Um, yeah, I, I would love to kind of pull that apart a little bit. Um, and I guess something to hold, maybe something to to hold on to. I'm, I'm recognizing that I'm, I'm putting out a lot of ideas, but um, what is this kind of possibility of shape shifting um, while holding on to different realities? Like, what is it about paying attention to other realities um, at the same time that allows you to? Um, I guess also relating to the course, like be in this moment, but also um, be in like an imaginary at the same time. Yeah, I don't know if that's enough to hold on to, but. <laughs> Whoa, it's a, it's a big question. <laughs> but, but I guess that um, when you, you have this, uh, you are able to see in a different way, you cannot come back. And this is something that kind of changes everything. And it's not uh, a, a good thing because sometimes you are you are with like your shadows and you are with, you know, uh, what it means to like all the privilege that it it comes in a position of a like as me, a white woman in Brazil. Uh, this comes from um, from a past and, and and like things that were uh, unseen before they they come to life and this um, but 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 you can't you can you can't uh, pretend that you don't see anymore so you make uh, choices uh, regarding to that whenever is um, inviting uh, people to something or being able to 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 I think it's a, it's a different in the way you you see things and you and the things you bring to this world and also the way you speak uh, changes because uh, sometimes even regarding to non-humans right you are um, 
like more than humans and and then you you perceive how the narratives are so anthropocentric and then you can't uh, don't see that and then when you are saying about how to envision things that are not there i feel that art and uh, language are are uh, are ways where we can uh, bring this life like i also um write poetry and and uh, it's one of the things i i like most we, we in the film we also brings um in the film that I, I i directed i also talk about dreams and i feel that all of these things that we start uh, connecting our souls and realities with that they are already with us in a way in an invisible way sometimes and uh, and and they have a power although we, we sometimes f feel that you know this is you know people okay they are doing these visionary things in in art or something else but no that's why this sometimes um uh, these extremist governments they don't like art and culture like here in brazil we we, we suffered a lot with you know less government in, in culture that's why because it's it's um they want to 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 finish that in 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 because this creates the spark for something different for for uh, you know a different reality um in the last uh, year there, there was a very beautiful film here in brazil that is um that's the story of a uh, um a, a black boy that wants wants to be uh, that wants to go to to mars in a mars expedition and that and the film is so beautiful in so many ways there he has a a queer um uh, sister and and it's it's kind of the end is something so uplifting and people were like uh, clapping in the cinema so and and this brings joy in a way that's not uh, uh it's not out of reality it's together with it it's it's it changes together so i feel that in this course we're, we're also going to going to bring this people that are thinking about cultural shifts and and uh, that that has totally impact on on direct reality you know things are together and i feel that I don't know if, if that was your question, but I feel that uh, it's a way of addressing that that I feel that's very, you know, connected to reality. What do you feel, Naida? Well, for I'm in my in my work um, and in the research, there's a word um, that I love, which is the plural verse and the plural pluriversality of how you can see the world and be in the world. Um, I think that recognizing the larger humanity and the larger connection that we have to what is called nature, however, we are nature, we are part of it, we are inside of that ecosystem. When we are breathing the air, we are breathing what the earth has created. Um, so it's also to find those connections back without it being um, uh, what I would like to say, uh, not something that is idealized or utopianized. It's more about in the space of where you are and who you're with, how are you moving through the world? And are you considering all of the strengths that you are bringing to the world? Um, but also how the world has gotten to where it is and the reality of the spaces that we are working in and working the people that we work with. Are we seeing the full repercussions, the interconnections, the complexity? Um, if we can see those things, which can be very difficult if you are used to this solves this and then we're done. It's like, no, we're in a really complex system. It's always been complex and it's always been a system, but we've done a really good job um, in the last couple hundred years to make it a little bit more like we're in control and that we have all of the answers. 
which a lot of this work has been very, very helpful. But it's also to see how else can we see the world um, in its complexity and recognize that we do have a place in it and that we can nudge it, that we can encourage it, that we can feed it in the way that we would like it to journey on. Um, again, not an end, but a journey. Thank you for that. Um, I would like to continue that thread um, and move a little bit through uh, to, to, talk, to talk about, I think, as we're moving into thinking about, um, I guess, holding multiple things at once um, and being cognizant of how this is nothing essentially is it, it's always been complex right like you said Naida um it's just that we've been able to not see it and now we're seeing it and you know in that spirit I think something I really would like to talk through is is the idea of the great turning um which is something that we we're going to be talking about in the course um and that relates to to responsibility because you know, as Donna Haraway says, the responsibility is like a collective knowing, um, and it it rejects the the metaphysics of individualism, as she says. Um, and part of that is is turning to uh, this, seeing our efforts as part of a wider um, consciousness, a wider change, a longer history. Um, and I also want to. Um, put here the, the the mythical bird, the Sankofa. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, that that uh, was also part of the description of the course. Um, the idea that that it is not a taboo to return and fetch it when you forget. Um, really love that metaphor, and I think there's so much there. Um, but I think I would like us to talk about why it's so important to look back collectively and individually. And also how that connects, um, you know, how when we look back individually, we are also doing the same collectively. Um, yeah, so just opening that up, opening up that kind of worm, seeing what unfolds. Well, I can I can add to um, that, build on that a little bit. The the concept of um, um, considering yourself as one moment in time in a long history of time. So part of this is this, this idea that um, you are connected, whether you may um, consciously think about it or not, to the past of which has led to you being alive and on the planet. So there is um, particular connections and larger connections to community. And this is one of the tensions that happen um, often in these conversations is how much do I need to take on the historical issues that I had no control over or that it wasn't my fault if that is you know a point of view and a perspective and I think at least the way that I like to think about it in this course or in my research is that all of the past has validity and it is important to just see it recognize it, speak to it, and then see where are you going to go from here. And I think that that is also part of what I would like to um, encourage in the course is not um, is to be able to sit with that, because sometimes sitting with that, no matter maybe from which perspective you're sitting, um, there may be good stuff in there and maybe not so good stuff in there. And it's to also recognize that there are both and to, that's where restoration comes, because if you pick up a narrative that is very one sided, it's actually not helpful for the individual to process what may have happened as in a, in a collective in the past. So it's to think about these stories and how they inform how you as an individual and also how a community might be um, acting or doing at this moment in time. So the idea of returning um, and remembering, and this is the reason why the word remembering is in the title, is that to remember is not a intellectual 
uh, process of the memory, not in the way that it's being used. The concept is that you're going back like members of your body or members of your community. And you're going back to find pieces of ourselves or pieces of our communities that have been left behind, maybe on purpose for safety reasons or defense reasons, maybe for whatever other reasons. And to say, what are those pieces that would be very helpful as we move forward? What are the things for me that I can resource myself by putting that part back into how I see myself or how the community sees itself? This is a reason why you see many communities currently who are um, very focused on uh, uh, returning to their native languages to encourage language um, reacquisition in their youth because language makes a huge difference on how you see and view the world because you were defined by this language. It informed the culture. So you're starting to see a whole, a many, many different signs where this type of remembering is happening. And so this course is really to invite all those who would be interested in having these types of conversations. Um, and so, yeah, this is where I would stop. Maria, what do you think? It's so beautiful, this of carrying the members. It, it reminded me of um, uh, a part of my research where um, it was, I think it was Canadian um, indigenous um, leader that she, the explanation of uh, carrying stories was because they needed to move and they, they needed to carry uh, their stories, but they couldn't bring their, their houses and everything that like objects that carry the story. So they started telling stories and this was a way to, to carry their own, um, their own ancestry, right? So stories were this, this way of um, keeping something and bringing for a, a future, future generation. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's just that, that the, the stories are, are a way to, when, when you, you are not able to bring your home, you bring the stories that they become a home and stories are very were for a long part of our time uh, something that changed it a lot so even the bible like the, it was something that was already changed but then the, the colonization and made the the the, yeah, the the thing has to be written and this changed everything because things <laughs> got stuck but so I feel that we are bringing in this course also the stories that move, the stories that are alive. And in this ability of changing the stories, we are uh, possibly helping changing narratives that are very stuck. Yeah, that's that. Um, I. Maria, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I would love to hear, um, <laughs> and maybe this is something that that, that we should keep um, for the course, but um, whether now or on the course, I would love for you to talk, uh, um, to, to talk a little bit more about that idea of um, stories uh, being in the past um, for longer than we've been alive, like stories have been passed on and have been moving and shifting and only when you write it down and in the practice of writing things down then then produce this idea of like a fixed narrative and a fixed story which and then you know from there you can go on to see how a lot of problems in the world emerged from um fixed stories and and fixed ways of um remembering something uh that doesn't update and doesn't uh, move according to the times um, yeah I, I, um, something to think about I don't know Marie do you want to add anything to that if not that's fine too but because um, it's kind of a 
noise. Yeah, uh, that, that just just a big noise here. But I feel that this is so 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 um, interesting. Uh, also, yeah, the 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 Jewish uh, Torah. It was also not. Re it was something that was past. That's so much to do. Uh, when I started, um, also Sophie's trend. I think she also gave a course at. She has a big research on that, and also I was talking to Bayo or Komolafi about this, because the, the the idea of the mythology is something that really works on, but it's different, has different um, ways of being told, and with modernity we, we fixed things, and even before that, like also uh, regarding to to something that's not exactly that, but. Um, I was doing a course uh, about how like films are also a way of fixing like patriarchy, it, you know, like female characters are in certain ways, ways. And then we just create, the, uh, of course, there's a reason that's, that uh, when you investigate who are the ones creating the stories, but it's unbelievable. There's the female fatale, there's female fragile, no, this is a it is a very beautiful course doing by uh, uh, Manuela Cantuaria, which is a um, script writer here in Brazil, and it's a course about only archetypes and the, the mythologies of um, filmmaking and regarding to female and how they they fix patriarchy and and also uh, there, there's also a black feminist woman. Uh, Mariana also telling about how they fix some um, ways of having female black characters in films and and this is how we, we started thinking that people are because we don't have other references so it's uh, that is very important for creating a, a, a mural a reference of how we see the world and that's the power of stories and myths and if, if we just have uh, the archetypes but they are not uh, um, complex, the, they, are, they are not vulnerable. They just have one side, that's what we see in the narratives. Um, we became become less complex. We think the world is less complex and it's more like this or that, but it's not. They're, all of these um, characters, they, they originally, they have uh, complexity. So yeah, I think this is a, is a subject to speak because it's and we have the examples and how this develops and but everything it's it comes to the the synthesis that we are so like stories are so important to us in so many ways and uh, if we think that stories are just stories we can't go from here to anywhere <laughs> And I'd like to just add, yeah, the one of the the, the concept of fixed and writing, um, um, history and whose history, um, what is history? Is it a recounting of the reality, or is it how we would like to remember it? There's lots of arguments within the historical academic spaces of what does it mean to see and are we rewriting are we correcting are we you know when there's a conversation about no but you know maybe that was very one-sided maybe there should be an, another narrative and and that becomes actually very sensitive in those spaces and so i i in my approach to this conversation the conversation is to just open up the dialogue to say how much have you um, not questioned, but how much have you investigated the stories that you see and understand? And have you given the same space for others that either seem strange, different, or for some other reason, impossible in your mind, which actually may have validity from the perspective of those who are telling those stories? And to at least that two-way listening is what you were saying. You know, it, are you able to hear? Are you listening is one thing, but are you hearing the message? That's something different. And are you able to do that? Are you open to doing that? 
And I think the course in my, again, intention is more of an exploration to uh, support individuals who are interested in being curious and are open to being curious and are open to um, maybe not knowing and having a question even at the end, because that's also the nature of complexity is that we do not always have the answers for everything. This is not a, after you finish the course, you will have 10 steps of which you'll be able to do. Mm, it's more like after you finish this course, you're going to have probably a long list of reading that you would love to do. You might reach out to certain communities and become a little bit more active. You might have different conversations with your family members. Um, it might just instigate more uh, reflection for yourself, but it also might challenge you to maybe want to see and be in the world slightly differently. Wow. Um, I love that. You know, for a moment there, I thought you were going to say you're going to leave with 10 more questions. And I was like, that's already a lot. <laughs> um, and honestly, I, I I have 10 more questions um, already. Um, but, you know, in, in the interest of time, I will I will ask um, one big question and then one small question and then we will close. Um, so so my big question um, and it is a little bit of a big question, but I would like to kind of circle I hate the term circle back, but I would like to come in full circle to back to the 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 idea of staying with the trouble um, and sitting with discomfort and um, learning how to be in that space. Um, I was trying to think through um, why anybody would want to do that um, or why you would choose to stay with the trouble. Um, this is coming from somebody who hasn't really fully went into Donna Haraway's work so I'm really just going off how my own thoughts here um but you know I think when I was reading the piece that you sent over um about staying with the trouble being a um act of resistance against normalization um that really stuck with me because I think the, the at this point in um I guess collective history um being normalized being desensitized is actually so much harder than staying with the trouble. Um, it, like ignoring, it, like knowing that it's happening and then closing your eyes to it um, and then normalizing the fact that, you know, th this is happening and just being like, yeah, whatever. Like that to me is so much harder than staying with the trouble and really trying to hold that together with other people and hold that within yourself. And so for me, like that's, that seemed like, you know, being attentive and, and opening up yourself to, to the ways in which you can be affected by this moment seems almost the better option, you know, than, than just pretending that nothing is happening. Um, yeah, but, but I would love to hear from, from both of you about, um, yeah, about your thoughts about staying with the trouble and maybe also in bringing in a little bit um, of, of, of Haraway's work um, and, and grounding us in in, in that long line of research of why um, sitting with the discomfort is so important and is ultimately going to be something that leads us to collective liberation? Yeah, big question. But the small question is after this, I promise. <laughs> um, what uh, Donna says is that uh, we have, uh, we have, two quick responses and one is the denial uh, and saying we are we are done that's apocalypse we shouldn't do anything there's nothing else to do and another one is the techno fixes and then you know there's there will be the hero solution and the you know techno uh, solutions that will save us and she she has she, she discusses how both of them are um harmful one because because both of them you don't do anything because you and you, you say uh, someone sometime will fix or you know i have nothing else to do because i'm just small human here alone so the idea of staying with the trouble is to to be able to 
to jump back in this and to understand that you are small but all, but also big in a way because you will make the connection so that comes back to the relations that you create so you create relationships in a way that you, that is impossible to to forget that you are part of that system and uh, i feel that in a way we are all kind of uh, denials at at a, a, a uh, a moment at our life because although we couldn't uh, you know brush our teeth in the morning i was also i don't know if it's latour but he says something like that that there is a part of us that is is denying the situation of the extinction happening um and all, all the other crises because although we, we would be you know in the uh, depression but um but i feel that there is a um, with the relationships you create uh, in the same of the trouble idea, you are able to jump into the, the feelings and the, the joy that is possible to cultivate. So uh, it goes to the idea that there is no like um, there is no utopia utopian future because things are already in a kind of destruction that is too bad but we should understand what um what regeneration is possible but uh but this is something to make um, yeah I, I i don't know if it is it's answers any question but i think she she comes from from saying this two sides are you know they are very bad if you just go to these other ways and in staying with the trouble you have um you have the possibility of creating other stories that's why she comes with the couture scene that she proposes like a time where you know you come back with the the earthly ones and she says that uh, anthropocene is also um, sh we should make anthropocene very thin and we should make these times with a lot of storytelling and should add the the plantation scene the capital scene and so all of that is to in creating stories to populate these times and possibly create new stories other stories and to investigate stories from the past and that's why in the end she creates a story that is um a five generation story where the first butterfly human hybrid doesn't doesn't uh, it's kind of has um, connection with the great turning in a way because the first generation doesn't complete the work and this is something that is for uh, us to probably we won't see earth uh, regenerated or something like that but we are in this you know in this thread in the I think it's it's the idea of being one in a big line, and this is responsibility in a way. Yeah, I I, I connect to this when I think of um, um, an image that was given to me um, in a conversation, and the idea was um, imagine um, if you look at the ocean. Um, miles away out in the ocean, there are waves that are being created. And if you think of yourself in this moment in time as out there in the ocean on as part of wave, you're being generated from the energy and the momentum of those before you, positive and negative. And that movement towards the shore is what the energy of the planet does based on the move and this and that and the gravity. And so I'm moving towards the shore, but you as an individual, the question is, is where am I in this journey? Am I about to crash on the shore? Is it the end? Or am I way out there kilometers or miles out into the ocean? and just starting to make my movement towards because all waves can be stopped, shifted and moved because of other things. So I kind of think of staying with the trouble 
kind of as this long distance swimming. It's being out there and knowing that there is going to be trials and tribulations, and there's also going to be um, joyful moments, and to sort of keep going and to keep contributing. Um, to, to, to recognize that, again, through collective energy, um, things have in the past, um, recent past, had some very huge social changes. But those social changes were all created because hundreds, thousands of individuals decided it was necessary. And that takes time. It is not something that happens in two years, one year. But it takes collective energy to want to keep going, to be curious, and to take those next steps. And again, that's how I would add to this piece of your question or in response to your question. And one add, one thing to add more is just the, the idea of not wanting to fix things. So staying with the trouble is to be able to, to hold uh, the the grief also of those times right so and and that's why also it's the, the collective is needed because how do you understand in your heart that a species is not here with us so so the idea of like the ways i don't know dolphins uh, create stories in the world this is also dying with their dying so how to live in a world that where this being is not here anymore and at the same time we don't have the the language to understand deeply their feelings you know so that's why i also feel that uh, the haraway and also um uh, Vincent de Pre goes with the idea of uh, having stories about what what these beings uh, are saying or poetry of the it's the not it's the of of uh, that animal that is very smart on the sea like what's the name like that being, no 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 that being of uh, like Little Mermaid Ursula, she is a, like the antagonist of Little Mermaid. She is a octopus. She has many octopus. Yeah, of course, ah. octopus. Oh, yes. like ten um, tentacles. Tentacles. Yes. Oh. So the sorry, <laughs> but um, just uh, Vincent de Pre has the this book about um, the stories of the the octopus and the. Uh, the, the poetry of the octopus and so I think that's why their storytelling goes also in creating that kind of um, dreams for this time that we live because we are losing not only them as a species but as stories right beautiful um love that cool curated moment of finding which animal that was um and now I will think about the octopus and stories about the octopus for the rest of the evening. Um, so thank you for putting that in my head. And also it connects so beautifully to um, the image Nida, of um, the ocean. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit with that um, longer as well. Um, and, and now that we've come to the end, the final small question, um, this is really, really small, um, but also, I mean, you know, expansive and it doesn't necessitate a super long response um but yeah so so i think one of the big um we we come back a lot to bio kamulafe's work um and in the course also one of the one of the assigned readings is um or not sure what, whether it's a reading or but it is a link and um it, bio has written a lot about this the idea that times are urgent so let us slow down um and i think that relates nicely as well to um donna haraway who who uh, in the interview, Maria, that you sent, talked about the word urgency and how she feels about um, the word urgency. Um, I, I want us to kind of, so I guess to me, like the course and engaging in um, the course is a way to slow down in response to urgent times. Um, and, you know, we can look for, of course, there are things to do now, actions to take, um, 
but how are we all going to collectively stay with the trouble and collectively be with it, each other and I think the course is a really beautiful way to come together um, to to grow our capacities together right um, so yeah I, I, I wonder um, what advice you, you may have or, or thoughts you may have about the idea of times being urgent and the importance of slowing down um, yeah <laughs> Well, I think um, to uh, slowing down um, does not mean that you're not doing anything, because this is actually very interesting, the concept of, of stillness or slowing, as um, it means that you're not moving and therefore you're not being productive. And in fact, if you move from a space and a place that has been informed by reflection and consideration, usually the things that you do implement, design, create, um, have a little bit more direction and intention. And for those who study and read up on intention, you may also notice that when you are more intentional, the actions can have, doesn't guarantee, but can have um, the ripple effects that you're hoping it's going to have. And so by the slowing down is almost, and this is where I say it's the resourcing. Um, if you want to climb a mountain, you don't actually try to do it all in one day. I mean, that's not what the pros do. You go to a base camp, you acclimate, you get prepared, you do the next step and you go up slowly, but you stop as you're going. And I think for myself, I think of this course as one of those moments to slow down enough to gather resources to gather the equipment to make sure that you have what you need for those next steps and to also meet people along the way who could inform you could become part of your community um, as we are all a human and non-human community on the planet um, just to be part of that collective because it is also very um, helpful in individual but also community and collective processes Yeah, it's this for me also, but just adding a little thing is that uh, for me, times of ur ur urgent let us snow down is much about attention. So like it's the, the situation can be the same, but the way you are there is different. And so like Naida said, like the, the intention that you put on it creates something that that can be different. You may have a different question. So is to, to be able to make different questions. And that won't probably fix things, but that's not the intention. But just to to create um, um, another possibility that in in with time that can can create other ways of living, right? And I think is that. And Very about beautiful. also be inspiring, right, inspired for so so many people that are going to participate in the course because they have a lot of work and varied in many different um, places on the earth and at some at at, at the same time they connect in many different ways so i feel that it's going to be very interesting to have them in conversation and with people that will join um, i think that will be very interesting beautiful place to end um i think uh a lot of what we unearthed during this brief conversation is a, is quite a quite a wonderful kind of peak and also um quick tour of of what we will be talking about on the course um and it is really exciting to be embarking on a multi-teacher course um we've been running a couple courses uh, recently at Advaya and they're single teacher courses so it's nice to weave in a lot of different narratives as our first course of the year and it kind of 
I think sets the tone really beautifully for the kind of collaborative work that um, we hope to be engaging in, not just at Advaya, but also just hoping that the energy pushes out into the rest of the world as well. Um, as we enter into the new year, I think um, what we need more than ever is this kind of collaborative um, work and this kind of conversation that spans, um, you know, spans continents and spans countries and histories um, and people and weaves all of those together and seeing what emerges. Um, yeah, so so to everyone who's watching, um, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Although it's so funny to be thanking people who we don't know. Um, <laughs> but, but thank you to whoever is watching this and reading this transcript, perhaps. Um, and I really hope that you will be joining us on the course. Um, we have uh, six weeks and seven sessions um, of really exciting material, really exciting conversations um, with, I think, a total of like 11 teachers, something like that, um, all coming from different backgrounds and bringing different types of expertise um, to this uh, compost heap. So um, really encouraging anyone who's interested to join us um, on this course, which you can register at, at via.life. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you both for this conversation. <laughs> and thank you for hosting. It's been fun. Thank you, Tommy. <laughs>